Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. Yes, you've got a horror Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is MRM's Wing Nation Weekend, presented by Hefner Racing Products, setting you up for the big race weekend. We are glad you joined us, Aaron Evernham and Steve Post, talking sprint car racing. Oh, did you see? We added to our collection here. I did see that. Yeah, I was was over at our friend's Plan B sales. Okay, now this is, I know a lot of you were listening on audio, okay? And we apologize, but some of you are watching on video, okay? And we have all kinds of die-cast cars on the on the, on the desks here. So, so I was you over, found these? Yes, at Plan B Sales. Hmm, what uh, else you there's, got over there? There's a, I got all <laughs> kinds of stuff. There's a Danny Lasoski one here. There's a um, there's a Donnie Schatz one. And um, and uh, Kyle Larson, he drove the Plan B car. Yeah. And then, of course, our standard Kerry Madsen Madman MRN car and the uh, Hercules Tires Strongman in the middle of it. Again, uh, those of you joining us via video, you can see what we're talking talking about those of you joining us via audio uh you're like just talk sprint car racing we don't need to have pictures of your diecast cars so there <laughs> you have it so but uh we appreciate our friends at plan b uh for uh, restocking the uh countertop here mm. so good stuff along the way hey we've got a big weekend coming up it is the jesse hockett daniel mcmillan memorial for ascs and this is one of the big ones at lucas oil uh raceway in wheatley missouri uh the outlaws are back east thank you God, they're back east. <laughs> I about died on Friday night. I stayed I up. Well, we had all the hurricane stuff going on, so I stayed up. Uh, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. The outlaws are getting ready to start. And so I did follow along. Yeah. Saturday night, I said, y'all, y- Johnny Gibson, you're on your own. Okay? I made the heat races one night. The second uh, night. Yeah, no, Friday. Well, Friday, the other thing we had going on um, is uh, MRN had the truck race at uh, Las Vegas. Oh, okay. So yeah. I had that on. Uh, listening to listening to our buds uh, oh, that we're doing the truck series yeah. broadcast, so I had that on, and so I kind of transitioned from that to the um, to the world of outlaws. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, this week they're at uh, Eldora and Lernerville. Thank God, East Coast races. <laughs> Okay. And Central Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know we're September, but they're still up to three nights of racing. So big, big weekend there along the way. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we talked about the Hockett McMillan Memorial. Brian Herbert, the uh, announcer for the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. Uh, He's also an auctioneer. He's also performed weddings. He's the one that performed the wedding for Johnny Herrera. Oh. Yes. So uh, Brian is a a man of (laughs) multi-talents. And uh, I believe he's a new dad also. So uh, we're going to uh, have Brian join us here in just a moment. I want to also remind you, it is State Water Heaters Week here on Motor Racing Network. We're all excited about the big race weekend at Richmond coming up for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. And I, I'd, I'd probably get run out of here if I didn't tell you to tune us in this weekend on your local channel <laughs> on your way to the races or from the races or after or before. So uh, you can find us at your local Motor Racing Network affiliate or, of course, Motor Racing Network, MRN.com. Let's step away when we Welcome back. The voice of the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour presented by SawBlades.com. Brian Hobart, he'll join us. No matter what or where you race, Hefner Racing Products and HRP Wings has you covered. Built in the USA, HRP is the manufacturer of the original recessed rivet wing, including their premier shark wing series, as well as the new racer series sprint car wing. Hefner Racing Products wings are available for sprint cars, mini and micro sprints, winged outlaw carts, and junior sprints. HRP is the leader in mule conversions, manufactures and sells a full line of sprint car components, including Nerf bars and bumpers, front axles, precision laser cut chassis building tabs, brackets, tubes, and spuds. HRP has the absolute largest selection of trailer and shop accessories available to sprint car racers. When it comes to setting up your trailer or shop, HRP is the choice for the best in trailer and shop storage and organization accessories. Hefner Racing Products. Visit them and shop online at hrpracing.com. Now back to the Wing Nation Weekend Podcast, presented by Hefner Racing Products. 
Thanks for joining us. It is MRN's Wing Nation weekend, and it is a big race weekend coming up, particularly for the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but for all your racing needs, we get down toward the end of the year. Uh, we'd like to remind you, race teams and uh, those involved in the sport, you can check out www.hrpracing.com and get everything restocked as we get to these big fall races along the way. And one of the biggest fall races, we have the 8th Annual Hockett McMillan Memorial, the Lucas Oil ASCS national tour presented by sawblades.com joining us on the hotline he's the voice of the lucas oil ascs national tour he is a famed national anthem singer oh. he is the officiator of johnny herrera's wedding <laughs> our buddy brian Herbert joins us hello brian welcome back hi guys how you doing uh i am doing well how are you I'm, I'm peachy. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting up to the Diamond and Dirt tracks, going at it for three nights, and watching somebody walk away with ten grand. How about that, man? It is a big weekend. Uh, bef- I, I will talk about the weekend a little bit, but um, the weekend is held in honor of Jesse Hockett and Daniel McMillan. Brian, can you uh, can can you just uh, in- inform all of us about those two guys? You want to talk about? And, and I use the Dukes of Hazard as a reference where they said it's cousins, like closer than brothers. Yeah, that's what you had in this case. You know, Daniel being, as they called him, the ranch, and, and Jesse with his talent, and his prowess behind the wheel. That was such a formidable combination. And I wasn't around this level of the sport when, when unfortunately we lost him. But I actually remember where I was the day that we found out Jesse had passed away, and it was just the shock of losing a talent like that, losing somebody who is so great to the sport not just as a driver but as a person and the way he treated the fans the way he he worked with everybody you know nobody nobody was more important than the fan and i feel like today a lot of people need to look at that example and look at the example jesse said because it's amazing the emotion you know this being the eighth annual event the emotion every year that we go to this race that everybody still has for jesse and daniel yeah, you couldn't have said it better. I knew Jesse and Daniel pretty well myself back when Jesse raced for Casey Kane Racing and even a little bit before that, and they were they were class acts with for, for sure, without a doubt. Uh, Brian, talk about the event this weekend. You talked about the emotion going into it, but three nights, 10000 to win, it's a huge deal for you guys, isn't it? It really is. I mean, just in the A feature, we're doling out over $60,000 this weekend, and if three consecutive nights of racing like that, it really puts the pressure on these drivers to perform, especially now going in, you know, to the latter part of the year. And as tight as our points are now with Sam Haperteep Jr., yeah, he's leading it, but his margin is only 16 markers right now over Seth Bergman, and Blake Hahn's only 79 points back from him. Uh, it's it's tightened up big time, and we've seen this weekend make and break championship. So it's. You know, there's no split field. There's no nights off. Every time you're on that track, you're you're not only earning points towards the season championship and that fifty thousand dollar prize, you're also earning event points and every, every heat race qualifier, B main, A main, you're awarded points to determine where you stack up on Saturday. So it's you've really got to be on your game the whole time. Every lap matters. That is for sure with it. Uh, you, you talk about this racetrack and, 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 and Brian, I kind I love getting out to racetracks. I love seeing new places. I try to check places off and everyone says that I need to go to Lucas Oil Speedway, Wheatland, Missouri. Um, what is there about this racetrack? Uh, the, you know, you, you, what is there about this racetrack? It is, you know, the term that overkill is always, is never really appreciated. There's, there's more concrete in the pit than there is in most facilities. It's all paved pit areas. It's all muscle lighting. It is a Bose digital outdoor sound system. The sound system alone can handle a Metallica concert. Yeah. Um, the, the, the way it's structured, the stands, the suite, the, the, just the grandstands themselves, everything is pristine. The giant LED boards, the scoreboards, the fencing, the safety, everything that they've put into this is is top notch. It's what you would expect to find at Texas Motor Speedway, at Bristol, you know, just the the overall sheer just awe of how everything's put together. And, you know, not only do you have the racetrack, you've got the drag boat lake, you've got the off road track now. They keep talking about plans of an NHRA drag strip. Um 
you know, and when you're there, the, the amenity, the, everything from the concession stand, the way it's run, the souvenir stand, the diamond bar, and even having a, a slick track for the kids and go-karts. I mean, the, you can walk through the midway and, and not walk 10 feet, and there's, you know, there's so much to see and so much to experience. It's one of those tracks where when you walk in, your jaw is going to be dragging behind you because you're looking at everything going, this is in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. And this is amazing. That's awesome. I think we need to get that on the Wing so. Nation. We need to get that on the Wing Nation tour here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> Brian, the ASCS tour kind of sets the bar for 360 sprint car racing. You mentioned the awesome points battle you have going on, but talk about the season as a whole, car counts, crowds, uh, the schedule. Just talk about you know what what you've seen from the announcer stand. The crowds have been good this year. I mean, we've we've had some phenomenal crowds. We've had great car counts this year. We're still averaging right around 35 cars a night. And like every series, we're going to have nights where the car counts are going to be a little down. Maybe we're outside of our realm. Maybe there's too many shows booked in the area. Um, you, you saw this past weekend with the Outlaws where, you know, they went to Calistoga and had 24 cars. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they were just a couple of days earlier and had almost 40 cars. So in, as far as uh, car counts and fan counts, this year has been really, really good. We're still seeing crowds grow every time we go back to racetracks. Um, this year, one of the first things I've ever seen at any event is it is actively raining, and there are fans still buying tickets to get in the gate. The opening night of Speed Week in Amarillo, Texas, they sat in a rain delay for three and a half hours. Nobody left. Man, that's impressive. That is impressive. You? You're, 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 yeah. Now that you mention that, you're, you're right. The, I, I haven't seen the rain and everything like that, but the, the, the diehard passion for it mm. has been so good. I think the crowd size has been good, but boy, our diehards are really, really, really good along the way. Brian, I, I, I really, it, when I first started this show seven or eight years ago, I tried to sort this whole thing out with the national tour and the regional tours. And once I got my arms around it, I really liked the concept of it. Uh, Aaron, just to ask you about the national tour. How, how are the regions doing across the board? I know, you know, some might, some might be off a little bit or some might be but just across the board how are the regions going with ASCS not bad and, and like you said across the board there's a couple that are maybe down a little this year and then you've got like the Red River region and the Warrior region that are still they're gangbusters and and what's neat now is like a couple years ago we brought the Mid-South region back in and, and Arkansas for I-30 and Riverside and those tracks down there and they've had the mains almost all year So, I mean, and the regional tours are great in that when we come through with the national tour, it helps bolster car counts, but it also is a great feeding ground for these guys to move up and step up. I mean, you look at Brad Boyette a couple years ago where after he won the Power Eye and the ASCS Warrior Championship in the same year in 2012, then he started going on the road full-time national tour with us. Jeff Bergman started with our Northwest region when it was around. Blake Hahn started regionally down here in Oklahoma. Matt Covington's a five-time regional champion, and now he's up racing with us as well. So it's it's a great proving ground for teams to grow whenever they want to step up to running the national tour, and then that's where they really learn how to race on the road and organize themselves and get ready for when they want to take the next step and race in something bigger and better. You look at where Shane Stewart, Darren Pittman, Jason Sides, where all these guys came from, they all learned here you know, with, with Emmett's little traveling series and now look where they get to race today. So I've always said this is the blue collar national tour, you know, and and and, then, and that's fine. It's kind of like the in the way NASCAR is structured, where you have, you know, the top tier, and then you just come right down here, and all those guys is a nice little feeder series where they're able to go back and forth. And that's really we don't mind being that because we're watching guys like even most recently Aaron Reitzel be able to step up and go race and do what he wants to do. And it's really proud for us to be able to build these drivers and build these teams up where they can go race. Yeah, such a it, it is such a good point. And yet, and yet guys like Johnny Herrera, Wayne Anderson, Sam Hafford Teep or, or Hafer Teep are able to stay yeah. there and 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 do their business there along the way. Hey, I, I know this is old and before we before we cut you off, I know this is kind of old, but 
I, I don't know necessarily that we've talked about it. We When we ran into you at PRI last year, you were just busting at the seams about getting into central Pennsylvania, okay? Um, and we talked a lot about it right around when it happened, and everyone had a good time from our perspective. Sitting here with three or four months in the rearview mirror, um, how did that go? Um, just what was your assessment of how things went with your uh, your, your trip into central PA? It was fantastic. Um, the car counts were phenomenal. I know one, one of the things when we were going in, every, there was a lot of hubbub saying, well, it's all going to be 358. And we made it clear going in that, no, if you have a 358, you can't run because we can't tech that. We can't, con- you know, we, the point of having a spec head series is we're a, is everybody's on a more or less even playing field. So, no, you have to have an ASCS legal car if you want to race with us. And every car that rolled in the pits, was ASCS legal, and I think that really got people's attention because one of the big arguments in the past has always been, well, there's not enough cars. And, I mean, we had cars. And Justin, his crew, everybody at Williams Grove, Steve Inch, everybody at Sealands Grove, the hospitality, the the welcome, the everything that they did, they rolled out the red carpet, and it was just absolutely wonderful how they welcomed us there and really looking forward to the chance to go back. I know the drivers enjoyed it. It seemed like the fans on social media, it was a format they'd never really seen before. It was a challenging format with our heats and qualifiers. And, it, you know, you could really see the cream rise to the top. And let me tell you, them boys in Pennsylvania don't mess around. Yeah, yeah, you're on some you're on some high speed tracks as well. When you look at oh, Williams man. Grove and Sealand's yeah. Grove, not for not for the not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. So, um, no. g- great stuff along the way, and yeah, hopefully, I, I know I just I, we have a lot of our a lot of our fans are up there in Pennsylvania, and they loved having you guys come in. And I just uh, I just, I thought it was going to be a win win, and it sounds like it is. And and hopefully, we'll see more of that going forward. Well, Brian, uh, we certainly wish you the best this weekend in Wheatland at the uh, Lucas Oil Speedway, the Hockett McMillan Memorial. Well, as always, we appreciate the time and uh, best of fortune as you guys start to wind down your season. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. There we go. Brian Holbert joining us on the program. Just absolutely one of the great guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just just love getting a chance. I was I I, I didn't think to, I didn't think to ask him. Um, I, I was I, I'm happy. Um, but I was disappointed that he planned having a baby during the Knoxville Nationals week, and I didn't get a chance to see him. I didn't get a chance. He had to leave after the 360 Nationals. He had to go leave and be on Baby Watch. And I'm like, how in the <laughs> who world? Who plans that? Who, who, there was some poor planning there because Postman wanted to hang out at the Iowa Beer Bus with Brian and have a cold, frosty one. <laughs> And uh, he had to go do some baby watch. Well, no, he's pretty. Some minor pretty, thing in his Yeah, life. he was right in doing the baby watch. I'll give him that. So uh, <laughs> I love love when we get a chance to catch up with Brian, just one of the guys that just uh, just um, oozes passion for the sport and uh, just just absolutely have so much respect for him and the work he does. I listen to him all the time on Racing Boys. Yeah. I love listening to Brian call a race, too. And I love what's going on with the Racing Boys in the uh, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. It is the eighth annual Hockett McMillan. Memorial, Lucas Oil Speedway, Wheatland, Missouri. Tribute to Jesse Hawkins and Daniel McMillan. Friday, or Thursday and Friday night, complete shows that play $3,000 to win. Okay? And while you're doing that, you're earning points. Oh, yeah. Top, important points. Yes, important points because the top eight lock in to the front of Saturday night's $10,000 to win battle. Previous winners of this one, Jason Johnson won it in 2011-2012. Hollywood Herrera won it in 2013. Derek Hagar won it in 2014. Brad Loyette in 2015. Wayne Johnson in 16. And last year, Sam Haferteep Jr. was the winner of this big event. So it is a good one. Get out there to Wheatland, Missouri if you can't make it. Our friends, the Racing Boys, have the live play-by-play that you can follow along. And with the premium membership, you can actually watch the video as well. So uh, sign up for that premium membership. Keep uh, keep keep Scott and all the guys out there. Just keep them keep them busy. Keep them keep them traveling around and doing the racing stuff. World of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Cars Friday night, the before the Crown Nationals. Of course, Saturday's the four Crown Nationals, yep. okay? So this one's called uh, Before the Crown <laughs> Nationals. I love that at Eldora Speedway. And on Saturday, the Commonwealth Clash in Lernerville. So that is going to be good as they roll east. We mentioned this at the top of the show. Central Pennsylvania, they are continuing on, okay? Thursday night. Tonight, if you're watching this, okay, BAPS Motor Speedway. Get out there tonight. Support BAPS Motor Speedway. They continue to roll along. Friday night. 
Williams Grove, the Al Hamilton Tribute Dirt Classic Qualifier. I believe there's twin features on the line. And so, because they had one started yeah. and then got rained out. So that's going to be a big night at Williams Grove. And I'm telling you, I am, uh, I, I, I love going to any racetrack. So I'm not whining about going to Richmond this week. But it used to be when NASCAR juggled the schedule, I was always able to go do the Dirt Classic. I love this event at the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. Dual heat races. Okay, so if you don't like your starting spot in the heat race, well, hang in there because we'll do another batch and just invert them. So <laughs> and and you and then you take the points that yeah. tally up and you stage everybody A main, B main, C main, and we go race and uh, they're racing for twenty five thousand dollars to win fifteen hundred dollars to great. start. So that is stout. The Dirt Classic, one of the great events in sprint car racing. The other thing, I mean, I love the big events, and I know we just talked to Brian about the three-day show, the four-day Knoxville Nationals. There is also something sweet about just one-day one show. In just get in there, get yeah. after it, and get out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I just love that about this Dirt Classic. And, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, 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 this is, I, I've been to the last couple of them. I love this race, and you're going to love it, too. So get over there to the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. IRA Bumper to Bumper Sprints, Beaver Dam Raceway on Friday night, the newly reconstructed Beaver Dam Raceway on Friday night, and Saturday, LaSalle Speedway, and that is co-sanctioned with the MOA Sprint Car Series. Saturday night racing action, St. Francis County Raceway in Farmington, Missouri. They call it the, um, I think it's the Queen's Cup. It's the season finale. So, and Wayne County Speedway has the Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association. Also want to mention uh, the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. Man, they are just dumping. They're just taking all the bank money. They're, they're <laughs> going to the bank in Northern California, taking out all the money and giving it away this weekend. Uh, they're at Placerville. It's the NorCal Posse Showdown. I mean, a little shot across the country there at the Pennsylvania Posse. <laughs> uh, Friday night, $4,500 to win. It's four grand to win, but $500 if you're a, a top runner in the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. Wow. And Saturday night, 7000 to win. And, of course, Placerville. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about racing. elbows up. <laughs> I, 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 now, we talked about high-speed Sealands Grove and Williams Grove. Yeah. That's not Placerville. No, but it is bouncing off wheel to wheel. Oh, and, oh that good place stuff. is great. So it's the NorCal Posse Showdown Friday and Saturday night at Placerville. So make sure you get out and take care of the friends there in California. I just love our California friends along the way. Now, if you're, if you're not in one of those areas, if you're somewhere in the hinterlands, okay, <laughs> I, I would strongly suggest you go to wingnation.com and check out our broadcast calendar. And not only there do we have all of the races, but the links. Mm -hmm. So you can just pop onto Racing Boys, pop onto Dirt Vision, pop onto the Cushion, pop onto whoever's doing the race, Speed Shift TV. Oh, you can just drop it in there and uh, we'll take you right to the site. And uh, you can go catch all of the racing action. Again, always uh, like to talk with our friends at Hefner Racing Products. They're working. I, I talked to my buddy Jeff Wessel. Okay. Uh, I didn't talk about racing. Uh, he's working on a new project. So uh, we'll keep our eyes. With bulls? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> with bulls and mules. Yes. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I, and that's, again, that's the point of talking about our friends at Hefner Racing Products. It's like, it's like, uh, Sunday night at 10 o'clock, they're thinking about racing. Of they course. love it. Tro- Troy Hefner and everyone there, they love the racing. So that's why you want to make sure you check out www.hrpracing.com. That's Hefner Racing Products. They, if you need it, they've got it. So check that out along the way. Okay, so now we're we're looking at this weekend here, and um, uh, it's the uh, Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit on Mav TV, and uh, we're talking Ohio. Craig Mintz. Man, the Fast Series champion, the Fremont champion, and uh, our guest this Sunday. I love talking. He's also a girls basketball coach. (laughs) Yeah, we'll talk all about that on Saturday. This has been the Wing Nation Weekend Podcast, brought to you by Hefner Racing Products. The Wing Nation Weekend Podcast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.